Hi, thanks for coming and watching this video. Today I'm going to be talking about the tools and software that I use on my own personal computer for doing web development. Now obviously all the uh, software and tools I am using, uh, everything that I say about them is my own personal opinion. I'm not claiming that I'm a guru or I'm not claiming to know everything. Uh, so if I get anything wrong or you have a better recommendation, then please leave me a comment below so I can check it out and so I can learn something as well. The first thing you're going to need on your computer to write code is a text editor. Now, if you're using Windows, you have a program called Notepad. If you're on Mac, you have a program called TextEdit. In reality, you can use these programs to edit HTML files. But obviously, if you're serious about web development, you're going to want something a little bit stronger. So on Windows, you have a program called Notepad++, which is a great little piece of software for editing files um, just, you know, a little bit here and there. It doesn't do a lot of heavy lifting, but it's great for just editing files quickly. When I first started learning web development, I was using a program called Brackets, which is made by Adobe. Um, it was really great in the beginning, but I didn't really know much. I wasn't learning at a bootcamp at the time, so I kind of didn't really understand the value of a good text editor. Uh, I then saw a video on the Dev Tools channel or Dev Tips channel that he used uh, Atom, which is a text editor made by the guys over at GitHub. Again, I started to use it, but I don't know, I didn't really feel it was that intuitive, but eventually I settled on Sublime Text. I really love Sublime Text as a tool because you can install packages, you can install a load of add-ons that make the uh, view of the software look better, to make the workflow run a lot easier, and it's also a really fast piece of software itself. So that would be my recommendation for a text editor. The next level up, I guess, from a text editor is an IDE. So when I first started working at my current job, I was introduced to a piece of software called WebStorm. Now this is an IDE specifically built for web development. And I really found that it kind of takes all the best features about Sublime Text and puts it on steroids. Now it's a really intuitive piece of software um, that has a load of great features like autocomplete and language detection. It's got an inbuilt command line. It's really easy to hook it up to GitHub so you can you know, deal with uploading to Git from inside the software. Now it is a bit pricey. Um, the license does cost, I think around $120 a year. But the great thing about it is they do offer a free 30 day trial. So you can go and download it, try it out, and uh, just see if you like it. And you might wanna go ahead and buy it afterwards. But the next thing you're gonna need obviously is a modern web browser if you're doing web development. Let's just say that uh, Internet Explorer or Edge doesn't quite cut it. So in reality, most likely that you're using Chrome right now uh, on your computer. Just statistically, the amount of users on Chrome, it just dominates the market. So it's kind of recommended that that should be the browser you build for. But it's also great to have on your computer browsers like Safari, uh, Firefox, Opera even. So you can really test the project that you're building across multiple browsers and see if stuff doesn't work on a browser. Now, seeing as you probably are using Chrome, uh, a great inbuilt tool that it has to help web developers is the Chrome DevTools. Now, if you're using uh, Windows, you can just hit F12. If you're on Mac, you hit Control-Alt-J and it opens up a little window at the bottom of your browser. That's where you can go in and use the developer console. Now you can use the dev console for editing web pages in real time. You can play with the JavaScript of a page. You can set breakpoints on JavaScript so you can run a function and you can kind of see what the result is and what's happening in real time. You can edit colors, you can edit text, you can do this all in the browser. So it's an amazing tool that I only really started using when I started to work. But now I kind of find it indispensable not to use it when I'm working on my own projects as well. It's also great because you can do a change and check to see if it works or it looks good in real time. What happens to go to your text editor, make some changes, hit save, reload the page. It just makes your workflow a lot quicker. Terminal. This is a program that we weren't taught to use on our bootcamp very much above and beyond this is how you open node and this is how you run a mongodb database but as time has gone by sort of in industry for me the more i've realized that knowing how to use your terminal window is really important again for coming to use stuff like node.js or mongodb it's all run through the terminal but also when i started to learn angular 2 
I realized very quickly that a lot of the work that you do with Angular 2 is done through the command line in the terminal. So you kind of need to learn it. It may seem weird and out there and a little window full of code that doesn't really make sense. There's a few great tutorials out there. I've linked them down below. GitHub Desktop. Now, if you're using GitHub, which I recommend you should be, um, to store and save your files and save your projects, a really great add-on they have is GitHub Desktop which installs a piece of software on your computer that just gives you a bit more of a user interface for your GitHub. So merging files and syncing and all that sort of stuff is done through this piece of software. And it just makes understanding GitHub a lot easier than trying to do it all through the command line. If you don't know how to use GitHub, I've made a video on how to set it up. So just uh, I can click here or here and you can go and watch that video. Now getting onto more hosting side of things, I recommend you download onto your computer a piece of software called FileZilla. It's an FTP client, like a file transfer protocol client, which allows you to remotely connect to a server so you can really uh, interact and drag and drop files from your local machine to a server in a really easy and intuitive way. I find it easier to use a piece of software like this rather than using a cPanel if I'm uploading stuff to a server. Um, just because it's more instant, there's less lag, there's less chance the browser might crash maybe. Um, you know, you just open a route to a server and you just leave it open and you can just work, you know, very freely and easily transferring files, uploading and downloading. You then also have a couple of add-ons. If you're using Chrome for web development, I recommend you go to the extension store and you search for Postman and you search for web server for Chrome. Postman is a really great piece of software that allows you to make calls to a server and to a database without having a front end built. So in terms of when you're developing maybe a full stack app or a full stack website, you can build your back end first and test everything's working without even having to build a front end. You can also use Postman to call an API, um, you know, check that you're sending the right parameters, check that the response you're getting back from a server is correct. So it's an amazing tool for speeding up the development of a full stack app or just testing to see if an API that you might want to use works properly. Now web server for Chrome is a little add-on that creates a local web server on your computer that you can run a project from there. So it basically allows you to simulate as if your website was a live website on a server. Now I'll touch a little bit on Node.js and MongoDB um, for two reasons. Number one, it's the stack that I learned when I was at my bootcamp. And number two, more so for Node.js, it's kind of inescapable nowadays when it comes to JavaScript development. You know, you have to have Node.js installed to run NPM, which is Node Package Manager. You have to have Node.js installed if you want to learn uh, Angular 2. So it's kind of an indispensable tool to have installed on your computer even if you don't know how to use it. Like I said, MongoDB, it's the sort of database that I learned at my bootcamp. It's a NoSQL database, so you can kind of just build a JSON object to send to it. You don't need to deal with uh, SQL or querying a database. It's very easy and intuitive. And again, if you know JavaScript, you can work with MongoDB. If you are using MongoDB, I recommend using a program called RoboMongo, which Again, it gives you, like GitHub Desktop, a graphical interface of your database. So you need to rely less on the command line to you know, make a new database. And lastly, the piece of software that I use on my computer that really helps me work is iTunes. Now this probably seems like probably the most controversial item on the list. Um, there's a very simple reason why I do use it. Um, I have a Mac and I also have an iPhone, so it's a great subscription service that I can listen to music. I can just start a project, find a playlist, put it on, put my headphones on, and really just zone out or start working. Um, it's also another reason that I have to use iTunes is that here in Israel, we don't have Spotify. We don't have any other real music subscription service that we can use. So that's kind of what I'm stuck with for now. <laughs> so. That was a quick breakdown of all the software that I use on my own personal computer for doing web development. But if you're first starting out or you're just getting into web development, I really recommend having all these tools installed on your computer and really start to learn how to use them inside out. 
Because at the end of the day, it'll help you once you get to industry and once you get to where you want to be, which is being a web developer. I also realize there's stuff that I've missed out, um, stuff like Webpack and Docker. For me, they're still buzzwords. I don't really understand what they do. So again, if you do know what they do or you want to send me a recommendation of something I should learn, leave me a comment below. Uh, I'd love to keep learning. I try and do it every day. So it would really help me out if you guys could teach me or help me learn. So thanks again for watching. If you found this video useful, then please go ahead and subscribe to my channel because I have a lot more great content like this there.